Are we recording? Yes, we are. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. It's still the same day I started recording WWE for me, but we <laughs> this is a week ahead of when it's going out. We've got 10,764 people tonight in the Blue Cross Arena. Cha-ching! In a preacher about our terrible wrestling and not system crowd heat, God knows what the um, one night only call-ups are going to do then. Um, Layla, Summer Rae and Tamina defeat Brie Bella, Bailey and Alicia Fox in 4.33 and Summer Rae defeated Alicia Fox by pinfall. Summer Rae was the weak link. Alicia Fox 29, Bailey 30, Brie Bella 49, Tamina 36, Summer Rae 13 and Layla 53. Alicia Fox in technical and performance, Summer Rae in performance and Tamina in technical. So I have changed the WWE product to suit my booking style as I always do. Many of you know that I have... Heavy and heavy on traditional medium and then modern heavy, which makes the wrestlers equally rated on performance and in-ring work. If you didn't know, that's how every company I book has. Um, at least one of your workers in the segment is either eternal gimmick change waiting to happen. Are you sure in the country the wrestling is new? Who's got... Ah, uh, yes, Alicia Fox. Just going to give her and you have got your... There we go. All of these guys are going to have gimmick changes tonight. Except for Dolph Ziggler, because I found out the issue with him, even though I know what I've done with him, is going to cause a lot of aggro. In a pre-show battle, it's a pro wrestling on this crowd. He's Sammy Zayn, Everborn, and Sin Cara. And Xavier Woods defeat Heath Slater, Kurt Hawkins, Jinder Mahal, and JTG in 4.52. And Sammy Zayn defeat JTG by pinfall the Brain Buster! 52D+. Plus. Xavier Woods 37, Sankara 53, Evan Bourne 57, Sami Zayn 56, JTG 43, Jinder Mahal 39, Kurt Hawkins 40, and Heath Slater 46. Evan Bourne in Techno and Jinder Mahal in Forms. And as I was this, um, I'm going to say something now. When I was listening to um, Yogs Cast Hannah, or Yogs Lamadia, as she's known now known as, um, she made a good point. You do not do this as a business, which I haven't done. I'm setting out to do this because I enjoy it. It's fun. I love sitting here for 30 minutes, booking a show, then recording that show for you guys to enjoy my creative decisions. Whether you watch or not, that's your own prerogative. But I've come back after six months of my last recording video, and I remember why I wasn't enjoying recording six months ago. Because it wasn't a game I enjoyed recording. This is a game I want to enjoy recording, and I'm going to enjoy recording it because already I'm having fun with everything I'm doing. Each company is different, and I'm really happy that we've been able to get Impact Wrestling from 1987 back as a Season 2. And as we head into 18, 19, 1980, I've got big things planned for the company. I've got big things planned for WWE. All the storylines that are going on now in WWE are only going to continue to Extreme Rules. Uh, extreme Rules are everything that's going to change again. I might cancel the brand split just because of tag teams and stuff, but we'll see what happens. But let's get on with the show, otherwise we'll be here all bloody day. Um, in the decent pre match, Christian, the, the Miz, and Damien Sandown defeat Santina Morella, Zack Ryder, and Kofi Kingston in 6.35 when the Miz defeats Zack Ryder by pinfall with a school crushing finale. In terms of ring work, Christian was head and shoulders but everyone else. Kofi Kingston 71, Zack Ryder 48, Santina Morella 52, Damien Sandown 71, and the Miz 71, and Christian 81, and Santina Morella in performance. And already you can see the difference of doing it rated on popular, um, popularity and performance. In the wrestlers, and this is an issue that I have with a lot of, you know, the way the game works. This is why I like using this. It's a bit cheaty, but at the end of the day, it makes you do some good matches, but your angles might be shit. You know, but we'll see. Um, I've got some good decent angles. In a preacher had terrible wrestling, and all this is the crowd heat. Rosa Mendes, Nikki Bella, Naomi, and Natalia defeat Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Emma, and Sasha Banks in six forty. When Rosa Mendes defeats. Sasha Banks by with a hell of makeover. So all of these girls are up for one night on deal. Diamonds went off a game. It's only sustained a brain frog. Sasha Banks is not suited to a gimmick. Well, I ain't dealing with that. That's NXT's job. And that's <laughs> Natalia 55, Naomi 30, Nikki Bella 42, Rosa Mendes 30, Sasha Banks 22, Emma 30, and Carmella 27. Emma improving in performance and Carmella in performance. So already you're seeing with the women's, Natalia has gone up a bit, but Naomi has. Nikki Bella's gone down. Rosa Mendes gone 30. <laughs> but, you know, it's working. Yeah, we know. Thank you, Slaughter. And then, in a face of Avatar, so Paris and Little Heat, Tyson Kidd defeats Somni Crow in 8.05 by film the Code Blue. Yes, that is Sammy Callahan. Somni Crow's getting better. His gimmick, Somni Solomon Crow, 40. Tyson Kidd, 63. Uh, Somni Crow working technical skills. 
He did this gimmick only at house shows. He never ever appeared on an edition of NXT. I think he appeared once on NXT TV and then left. I might be wrong on that, but yeah. <laughs> now look at him. He's heading towards going to into a match. With, the rumour is he's going for a match against Brian Cage for the world title. Personally, I think he's one of the best wrestlers alongside Eddie Edwards and Cage in Impact at the moment. You know, Rhino and RVD are just... Well, Rhino's come back and done quite a lot of good stuff, actually. Quite surprising at his age, but Rob and Dan's doing quite well, but they're not putting the titles on these legends like Tommy Dream and that. They're just there as a novelty act, which is what they should be, not being horrible to them, but that's what legends should be used as. Unless you're me and you're booking a show and you need them. Um, yes, I do want to do that because Tyson Kidd... Oh, I've got to do that. Um, we're not going to handle any changes yet, because John Cena's sort of turn, so, some la la la, is not going to happen. John Cena is turning heel, or is he? <laughs> Am I tricking you? Dave Batista comes out to ring on the open spot. Let's get SA3 B+, which is brilliant. I come out here every week and put my body on the line, and all you do is boo me. I've had it with WWE, the WWE fans disrespecting this is why I quit WWE in the first place. I quit. I'm not putting up with this crap anymore. I'm leaving WWE for good. And I'm going to join New Japan or TNA, where I will be respected. Ooh. <laughs> they ain't dropping other companies in WWE in 2014. I don't know. I'm a brand new Vince McMahon, but doesn't give a shit anymore. I just thought that would be kind of like, you know, WWE have been known to do that, to kind of quickly shock, to kind of put a shock value onto their shows. When, you know, Raw didn't do that good, they do that. Then John comes out. John Cena comes out. Boo-hoo. Once again, when stuff gets hard, you're going to quit. This is bullshit. When you got your main event on Raw next week against me for the world title. How about you do How about you do that show? And if you lose to me, then me, you leave them. And then Dave comes out. And he goes, Here comes the guy that half of the roster love, the rest of the hate. Half of the fans love and the rest hate. I don't know why I put a roster. You know what, John? I'll come to Raw next week for our match. I'm doing this so I can prove I am better than you and I should be the face of the company. See you Monday. So John Cena and Dave Batista have got a match on Monday Night Raw. I have... <laughs> um, WWE Monday Night Raw, John Cena versus Dave Batista is going to be your main event of the evening. Hopefully some of the people I'm trying to hire will be a part of that show. I don't know because some of them are going to have to work out the rest of their contract. But I'm sure you're going to be surprised. Would you like to see the other match? You're going to have Alberto Del Rio versus The Rock on Monday Night Raw. I'm not going to book the SmackDown matches in yet. I'll book them in later on because I don't want to get penalised for um, not putting them on this show. Which I don't think can happen, so we might book them in. So, yeah. So on Raw next week, you've got Alberto Del Rio versus The Rock. Dees versus John Cena. That's the first round matches. Kane will be taking on Mark Henry and Randy Orton will be taking on Sheamus. But they're the names I have picked for the tournament. They're the names I had written down on the bit of paper when I did the tournament. Do you want to continue about addressing this? Yes. Please, I'm ignoring that until Extreme Rules. In about a decent wrestling, but a little heat. Primo and Epico, no longer the Lost Matadors, <laughs> defeat the good friends in 448 when Epico defeat Jack Swagger by pinning the half, half an hour and leg tap slam. Cesaro 65, Jack Swagger 70, Epico 60, Primo 58, no work from 68C+. Plus. And this is why I like rating it on in ring work as well as you know their popularity because they've written you know a lot of you know these wrestlers on WWE roster. I wasn't going to do it, but then I realised that actually we're going to get low ratings because hardly any of them are popular, but they're good in ring. So we do it on a bit of both. That way, I feel that's kind of more the modern product with WWE anyway. And about the great wrestling and decent the crowd, Rob and Dam defeat Rey Mysterio in 734 by pinfall with a five star frog splash. RVD 79, Rey Mysterio 85, no work from a 73B minus, and I think this is what's going to kill people with my product. Let's hope not. Are you sure? Yes, because it's going to happen in the next match. After the match, RVD gets up to celebrate his win. Ziggler hits the ring to beat down Rey and beat, beat him down. Rey gets up and looks like he's going to help RVD, but he attacks him as well. Rey asks for a mic. <laughs> Every single one of you fans are stupid, and now, and now nothing... And know nothing with what's going on. I can see them now. People wearing NWO t-shirts. Well, it's back. They take off their shirts and show NWO colours. So the black and white are back. I'm not the leader of this NWO. Nor is it the old members. But he will reveal himself at Extreme Rules. Long live the new world order. 
Yes, my friends, the New World Order is back. Um, I couldn't think of anything for these guys to do, so I am going to complete all of these turns and changes, so they're all changed. I ain't the how well it went, because I know Gold Signal is one, because the only reason I showed. The NWO is back in WWE. The reason being is I wanted a stable where I can turn Rey Mysterio and some of the bigger faces to heels, and then some of the bigger heels to faces. So that's what's going to be happening over the coming weeks, on over the coming months, I'd say. I'm not going to do one a turn every single week. But yeah, so just be aware that the NWO is back. Who is the leader? Well, I think many of you will guess, because I've kind of... Hinted it already tonight, but you'll see. I think many of you will work out what's going on. In the bout of a decent wrestling, Little Heat, Adrian and Neville defeat Fandango in 8.13 by Pinfall the 6.30 sent on. Fandango 48, Adrian and Neville 60. See, he got a better rating because he was rated on his performance as well as his... Excuse me. Um, popularity it always works. And then Randy Orton's in the back and he goes, Mark Henry, you want to send shots to me? If you make it out of your match next week on SmackDown against Kane... I can promise you, promise you, the week after you'll be facing the Viper. And when you face me, I'm going to RK you and pin the world's strongest man. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Right, we're going to book these now. And I'll probably get penalised at the end of the show, but I'll, oh God, I'll sort that out in a minute. Um, so the first one's going to be Kane versus Mark Henry. Um, and then that's going to be your semi-main next week. Um, Kane and Mark Henry are going to be... On SmackDown next week. We're not going to be in the same venue as Raw next week. So be aware of that. And then we're also going to have Randy Orton versus Sheamus next week as well. I can't. I was going to turn Sheamus. But he. he I didn't want to do two turns where they've been so close together. Because um, Dolph Ziggler's turn was recent. So that was a bit of a push. And I know for a fact it went wrong. So, But yeah. He'll be facing Randy Orton. In the main event. Which I think will be a good match to be honest for Sheamus. Right, anyway, let's go and sort the backdrop out a bit. Like that. Move it down a bit. Zoom out just a touch, Josh. There you go. That's it. This is not a real DVD cover, by the way. I think this is one someone made for the event, and I've just kind of gone, yep, that will do. <laughs> I like it. And I know this is nowhere near where it was previously. Bloop. I'm trying my best. Oh, bloody hell. I'm no good at this. This is adding time to something. Just give up, Josh. Give up. It doesn't matter if you don't look right. There you go. That looks better. <laughs> That's better. Right. Anyway. Um, and then, okay, you then pin the world's strongest man. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm be minus. Let's move on. Um, Bray's in the compound on his walking chair with Luke, Eric Warren and Luke Harper. And he goes, we sit here at the compound getting ready for the, our six-man match tonight. The people are not wise to what Arabelle Abigail says. She wants the gold and we're going to get it for her. You see the buzzers only show you the way if you believe in me. So tonight follow the signs and you'll find your way. Once again I'm pretty good at doing paranormal eerie stuff. So once again the White family are hinting and you know being a bit eerie and like what does he mean by you know if you believe him you can only follow the buzzers if you believe in him. And, you know, follow the signs and you'll find your way. I am thinking about bringing The Fiend into it. In the extreme short match, Brock Lesnar defeated CJ Parker in 12-20 by pinfall the F5. Um, Brock Lesnar's 86. Uh, CJ Parker, 28. Brock Lesnar performance from Rumble. Anyway, 55 C minus. End of argument. Um, in a decent match, Dolph Ziggler defeated Justin Gabriel. Justin Gabriel, 58. Dolph Ziggler, 81. Yeah, we'll do you now. There you go. That's you sorted. With a zigzag, 72B minus. Beautiful. And AJ Lee's in the back. She's meant to have Tom Phillips on screen. I don't know why he's not there. So if your daddy's little princess, you can just force yourself into the title picture. If you want a shot, you got it Extreme Rules. Yes, so Extreme Rules. I think we've already got it booked. No, we haven't. Have we? Yes, we've got it booked for Extreme Rules already. But she's now confirming it on SmackDown. She's going to give it the shot. I didn't know, you know, I thought that would just make more sense if she comes out and says it's fine. In a stream short match, Road Dynasty and the Shield defeat Rybaxel and the Brutes in 4-19 when Cody Rhodes defeat Paul Dempsey by Pimp a Beautiful Disaster. Um, Cody Rhodes seems obviously saying Seth Rollins is not suited to make Robert Slade, Alex Rusev is not suited. Why didn't, I, why didn't Rusev come last week? Roman Reigns 63, Seth Rollins 67, Cody 64, Goldust 63, Paul Dempsey 28, 
Alexander Rusev 39, Curtis Axel 53, Ryback 56. Um, I'm going to have to put Rusev on here now. That might be because the gimmick's become too subtle for the product we're using. But 61C, I can't complain with that. Then Kane's in the back. We see Kane walking down a corridor and the lights go out. And when they come back on, they are bright blue instead of white. And Kane is on the floor. Another mystery attack. Another mystery attack on Kane. I need to give him his mask back very soon as well. In about a terrible wrestling on and crow heat, Cameron and Charlotte defeat AJ Lee and Becky Lynch in fire and nine. When Charlotte defeated Becky Lynch by pimple, AJ Lee carried the match. Charlotte 32, Cameron 29, Becky Lynch 37, AJ Lee 53. Uh, Cameron in performance and Charlotte in performance. Rick Flair did some good work at ringside. The WWE's Diva storylines of Anderson segment Lost Heat, 45D. Not bad. In about that superb wrestling, great heat. Um, John Cena defeated Alberto De Rio in 753 by kind of the attitude adjustment. Um, Alberto De Rio 83, John Cena 86. John Cena improved in performance. Nope. Close. Bye bye. Come on, let's go. And then Kane's in the back with a mic and he looks really angry. He's open above If you want to attack me, fine. Come to Extreme Rules and face me. I'm going to destroy whoever keeps attacking me and it's going to be a first blood match. I don't care about PG. This will be TV 14. Oh, yes. I had to do it. I hate, I don't know why, but this. I know it ain't a proper storyline, but it will be a proper storyline. I'm going to turn this into a major storyline. The attacker. It's just because the person I want to attack be might not sign for WWE yet. But if it could, if he signs, which I think he will, then he's not a TV PG-13 wrestler anyway. So TV-14 might have to come back when we sign this guy. And I think many of you will be quite shocked who the attacker is. Paul Heyman's in the back. He goes, my name is Paul Heyman. And this is my client... Brock Lesnar. You see, earlier tonight is what happens when you forget about Brock Lesnar. And it's going to keep happening every week. 77B and they just storm off. Not bad. Um, in a decent match, Drew McIntyre and way back, Drew with Big E, Langston and Dean Ambrose in 750 following a double disqualification. I just thought I'd put these two into storyline. Way back's not suited his gimmick now. Oh, freaking hell. Obviously, the gimmicks are now becoming too subtle for the thing we're doing. Ray Bass, 70. Drew McIntyre, 51. Dean Ambrose, 73. Big E Langston, 61. Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose in performance. Oh, God. I hope he's not going to be injured. This is why I only plan the TV shows when I sit down to book them and not worry about what's going on too much because of injuries in this game. Um, we'll see what's... I will, I have to see what's going on because I don't want you guys seeing all the backstage stuff. And it's Drew Short Match. Big Show defeated Batista in 451 by Phil the Knockout Punch after distraction from John Cena. Batista 61, Big Show 73. A potential future heel turn for John Cena was hinted at during this segment. Mm, 70C plus. Uh, do you want to continue about dressing this? Yes. Um, a video plays hoping that your main event of the night is Luke Harper, Eric Corr, and Bray White will take on Daniel Bryan, Jimmy Uso, and Jay Uso. That's going to happen. A 70C plus. In a decent match, the White family, Bray White, Luke Harper, and Eric Warren, defeated Daniel Bryan and the Usos in 2208 when Bray White defeated Jey Uso by pinfall standing sent on splash. In terms of ring weight, Daniel Bryan sent shoulders above the nuts. Eric Warren was the weak link, shouldn't you have to That's fine. Daniel Bryan, 94. Jimmy and Jay. Jim, J Jimmy Uso got 57. Jay Uso got 59. Eric Warren, 42. Luke Harper, a 56. And Bray White, 74. There's no work improvements. We're going to just move on to the massive pre-show. In a superb post-show match, Kane, Randy Orton, and Triple H defeat the Rock, R-Truth, and Mark Henry in 11.07 when Kane defeated R-Truth by pinfall the choke slam. During the match, we also had R-Truth turn on Mark Henry. Mark Henry, 78. R-Truth, 62. Rock, 91. Triple H, 84. Randy Orton, 87. And Kane, 76. So we're going to complete his turn. That also means he's going to um, I don't think so. Um, Kane in technical, Mark Henry in technical, and Mark Henry in performance. So there we go, my friends. We're going to end this show there with a beautiful show. 64C, uh, not enough interesting storylines going on. I fixed that, but the show lost its popularity for 21 reasons. I fixed the storyline issue because I turned the strict storylines up until we can build them up properly because I'm not trying to build big storylines up at the moment. I'm just trying to get through. 
get us through to Extreme Rules of Storylines and then change it all around again. Because of hirings and stuff. But anyway, I'll see you guys on Monday for the start of the World Title Tournament. Will John Cena win? And Batista will quit WWE. Will Batista win and stay in? All to play for. What? Come join me on Monday to find out. Thanks for watching, people.